Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. I'm an anchor and a reporter for KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is the director of High School California Virtual Academies. There are nine right here in the state learning from uh, K all the way up through high school. And let's say hi to Angela Covell. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Well, we were talking off camera, but uh, you are kind of the wave of the future, depending on where we go uh, in our strange new world. Uh, have a lot of people been calling you, asking you, getting advice, that kind of thing? Yes, we have been fielding a lot of calls. <laughs> We've been working really closely with our chartering districts, um, collaborating with local teachers. I know a lot of us on staff, we've got a pretty large staff all over the state, and so many teachers are commenting about how they've just really enjoyed working with their kids' teachers and how to use things like Zoom and how do we do things virtually that they're so used to doing in the classroom. So we've been working a lot with districts around the state. I bet. I bet. Well, we'll see what happens in the fall. But you've been uh, doing this, uh, or at least the academies have been doing this now for uh, 18 years. Tell us, tell us how it kind of works for someone that knows nothing about uh, virtual school online. How does it work? Absolutely. So we have our kids all at home. Um, our teachers are also all at home and they are learning virtually, interacting virtually. So a student enrolls in our school on day one, they get a phone call from their teacher welcoming them and letting them know they're in their class. Um, we have our high school teachers are all, you know, all of our teachers are credentialed. Um, our high school teachers are credentialed in their specific content area and they are responsible ultimately at the end of the day for the students learning. Um, the learning coach, so we call, we call them all learning coaches because it may not be a parent, but a parent or a family member or a family friend is at home and supporting that student's education at home, making sure they're logging into classes, making sure they're accessing the online curriculum. Um, our curriculum is primarily online, depending on your student's grade level. Um, our high school is run, I'd say a little bit more like what most people imagine a college course to be, where they go in, they do their lessons in the online platform, they interact with their teachers through live sessions every day. Um, and then they're learning pretty much on their own and directed by their learning coach. Whereas our you know, TK students and kinder students, they're working more with a, their learning coach and with their teacher in their classrooms and then uh, doing some of their school online. A lot of it is printed out or a lot of our, it is activities they're doing with their learning coach. And they go to school every school day, just like any other brick and mortar student. Um, we are an independent study model. So we assign the work, we assess, we make sure our students are learning. And then students progress through the school year in a mastery-based curriculum. All right, uh, do they go to school at a particular time? Um, I mean, the bell rings at eight o'clock. <laughs> here we are, are they all in yes a and no. Or, or, or what? Yeah, it, it both actually. Um, so we have live, goodness, we have live sessions that are scheduled um, depending on the student and their needs every day uh, for a lot of our students. And sometimes it's a check-in, sometimes it's direct instruction where they are going and learning about a specific topic. Um, you can imagine there's a lot more of that in things like algebra and, and geometry and sure. sciences. Um, and then our little guys are getting a lot of that reading instruction directly from their teacher. Uh, so depending on the subject, depending on the student's age, and depending on what their instructional level is, which varies significantly between student to student, we provide a certain level of support that is directed for that student. And so they'll go to class, and it's pretty consistent through the week, um, and they'll go maybe nine o'clock every Monday they have a session or you know whatever their schedule looks like. And then there's also their work in the online school, and so they'll go and do their lessons, and that can be done anytime during the day. Kids can really work at their own pace. We have a pacing guide that we kind of lead them on, um, but for the most part, those are, are self-paced with their students. Okay, and there's nine academies spread out through California. So if you live in San Diego, there's one there, LA. How, how does that work? So it's very dependent on what county you live in. Um, if you live in Solano County, for example, you are Cava at Sonoma. We do have an academy to service almost every uh, county in the state up right close to Lake Tahoe. So I think that's our furthest north is just south of Lake Tahoe. Um, but we are able to service most of the students in the state that way. Is there ever any one-on-one -on -one physical contact at all or is it virtual from soup to nuts? 
Great question. We do have monthly outings that we have with, we call them outings. <laughs> they are opportunities for the students to interact with the teachers and with other students so that they get that social interaction that kids really value and is important for them. Uh, those are held all over the state and we've been doing a, an outing day where everybody is out of their office or out of their classrooms um, and out of their homes and doing something together. So that could be roller skating, could be museum tours, it could be park days. Um, there's lots of different opportunities and some of them are really specific to the student's course. Um, for example, one of our teachers likes to do an astronomy outing. Um, so he will go and take his kids into this really specific science area that they, you know, they do some really great activities like to their course. Other times it's really focused on getting those kids and, and getting those social skills built up and giving them opportunities to interact. I was going to say that's one of the downfalls of virtual learning because a lot of what you learn is just through hanging out with other kids and, <laughs> right. uh, you know, learning sportsmanship and sports and proms and all that kind of thing. So the, so you do build up friendships as well as, yeah. you, as you move along. You're not just isolated at home. No, there's definitely options for you. And you know, it's interesting because some of our teachers and our students have said they've built better relationships through this online platform because you really are kind of forced to get to know people in a different way. Right. Uh, our students a lot of times go to classes with other students that are in their classrooms for the entire school year. So they may have their you know Monday nine o'clock session with the same group of kids all year long and they end up becoming this little school family. Um, and teachers can really set up opportunities in their online classrooms with cameras with you know chat features and they're they're constantly talking on the microphones and giving them opportunities to interact and work collaboratively through educational experiences as well and which I, is just as important i think and i was going to say I, I can imagine some of the kids probably get in touch with one hey let's study together we'll go into zoom or you know not now because of our world but uh, maybe even get together physically to talk about things as well yeah, absolutely. And those there's a lot of kids that we will see on when we go to our outings, especially in the beginning of the school year, where they're like, hey, you were in our homeroom. I, I finally get to meet you face to face. And oh, you're a lot <laughs> taller. You see this. Yeah. You're not blonde. I can't believe it. It's really cute. <laughs> well, you're, well, you're a former teacher uh, in a classroom setting. Maybe you could talk about some of what, what, the differences and and the advantages you've touched on a little bit, but coming from uh, teaching in a classic classroom, what, what do you like about going online? You know, the first, I will say the first time I walked into an online classroom, you kind of stand back and you go, oh my goodness, I can't see anybody. And then you come to find out like all of these kids, you know, these kids text, it's what they do. This is the generation. They communicate really well through that kind of means. And then you get really comfortable with the tools. I think that's the most important thing for teachers to keep in mind is just know your platform. Know if you're using Zoom, know how it works, know all those tools associated with it. Um, get in there and play around with it and find out ways to be creative with it. Uh, as a virtual teacher, I feel like I can do just about anything that I can do in a brick and mortar classroom if I can think creatively about it. And so kids can still interact. We still do science experiments. Um, I taught science online for four or five years and it, we had so much fun. And so it just became this really you know, fun platform. And then on top of that, I was able to individualize for my kids as a teacher in a virtual platform that I really wasn't able to do in an online or in a brick and mortar cl classroom because once you start interacting with those kids online and they have this learning coach at home that's really able to support them in a unique way as well, you know, take some ownership of that learning, we can now meet with those kids kind of one-on-one -on -one without having to have an activity for these other 15 kids to do while I pull this small group of five or eight um, and work with them in a separate way. And so there's something for kids to be doing all the time, but you can pull unique groups, you can individualize a lot more, a lot more opportunities for intervention. And so I think as a teacher, that was my biggest positive was that I could really create this individualized, unique learning experience for every one of the kids in my class. And I would imagine some kids are coming from a classroom setting. Do you get kids, seventh, eighth grade, even high schoolers that make the switch over? And what, I mean, they got to kind of come up to speed, but what's been their reaction? Yeah, so our Kava kids are 
most of them are incredibly resilient. And the ones that really struggle with that change, we have a huge support system in place. They come to us for all different reasons. Um, a lot of our kids will come because they have just really struggled in the brick and mortar setting and their parents just want a different opportunity for them. Some of them are the absolute opposite. They have excelled and they want to move faster and others come to us because they are professional gymnasts. <laughs> so we have actors and, and all sorts of kids with us. So we really have the whole gamut. Uh, we just make sure that whenever a student comes to us for whatever reason, if they come in late in the school year, if they come in as a senior with, you know, credits to graduate and they're just got to make it through that senior year, that we have the systems of support in place. And ultimately, I think the biggest impact is the relationship that they have with their teacher, that they have that opportunity to build a relationship that um, they are reaching out and, you know, teachers are reaching out to them and checking in and making sure they're doing okay. And they're reaching out to their teachers when they need help. Building that relationship and that communication piece is huge for our kids and their success. What about band and sports and some of those clubs that, you know, you're at the high school level, uh, you know, that's all part of the experience. How do you supplement that? Well, actually this year, one of our music teachers who is amazing started a virtual choir. And so she has kids that participate. They actually created this amazing production of kids singing and they sang in their own settings and put them together, kind of like what we're seeing some of the movie stars right, and singers do now. <laughs> so right. cool. And so our kids are starting to do that and getting that opportunity. We have talent shows and senior showcases and all sorts of opportunities for our kids to share those things they're excited about. Um, sports are a hard one. We have kids that participate in local sports most of the time. They're doing community sports or league sports. Um, and then we don't really have a, a sports league at our school itself. Um, but kids that are, you know, local districts especially have that opportunity to start that up with their kids too if they're going to move to virtual. I imagine a lot of school superintendents are scratching their heads right now because uh, they got to get kids back in the classroom. Every day a kid doesn't show up, they lose money. It's difficult. I mean, you guys are way ahead of the curve. Um, I, is it conceivable that, you know, California and other states could go online this fall if we're still in this situation? So, yes, <laughs> it's yeah. definitely conceivable. Um, I think we have this opportunity right now where it, we started this whole kind of experiment in California of let's get kids out of classrooms, but we want to keep them learning. And so I think there was this push to do things very quickly. And I have actually been incredibly impressed with what districts have come out with in such a short time. These kids are learning. They're online. They've come up with creative ways to get technology to them. And that, I think, is your biggest battle. Moving into the next school year, districts have the summer to really reflect on what they've done and you know, those positive things that they've accomplished and then look at where they might need some extra support. Um, there's three areas I think are the most important pieces for any instructional program and that's going to be online and that is what are your expectations for your instructional program? You know, what are, make sure you've established clear expectations for participation from your students, your teachers, and your adults in the community. Um, the learning coaches and those parents and family members, they need to be an active participant in this. They need to be at least telling their kids, are you doing your schoolwork? Hop online, like what can you be doing right now? And checking in with them, making sure they're still learning. Teachers need to have an active role in that. Students need to be responsible for their own learning to an extent. So having really clear expectations from the start that says, this is what we expect for you to do. Here's how we expect you to participate. This is what our instructional program looks like. We expect you to go to classes. We expect you to log into this area and do this thing. Um, and then having that opportunity to individualize within that is going to be big. And that's really going to help with your attendance. The second thing that I think is really important is communication. <laughs> that's, that is huge for us. You have to build those relationships and not just with the students. Teachers are great at building student relationships. And a lot of times that relationship with the parent is messaging things home, having parent teacher conferences in a virtual environment, hand holding those learning coaches and those parents is really important. Just giving them that wraparound support so that they don't feel like they're alone in this right. is going to be a huge piece to building that connection. 
Um, and that really motivates the kids. It motivates the parents. It motivates the teachers when everyone's working together. And that's a, huge for kids in an online environment because you're at home and it's so tempting to go play video games. And then making sure you have that family support. I think that's the last one for me. Is right. We have to support our families and make sure that our kids have that, you know, the foundation that they need to be able to be successful at home and the tech support and the social emotional support that you may need as a learning coach to be successful as a teacher as well. Imagine it's a bit of a juggling act of um, a mother or a father at home, say they've got a, a fifth grader, an eighth grader, and a sophomore in high school. They're all kind of learning different stuff at different levels. You've got one in the den, one in the bedroom, and one in the family room. They're all online. And the learning coach is mom or dad. Um, I imagine that's a daunting task a little bit too, right? I'm laughing only because you just described my life. <laughs> my <laughs> husband working from home. I have a fifth grader and an eighth grader, no sophomore yet. <laughs> we, are, we are living that. Uh, I can speak from experience. It is. It is daunting. And the thing that has helped me work through this, and I think the one piece that really helps our teachers with their students at home is to have a structure, have something that the kids can rely on. What do they know is going to be consistent every day? And having that teacher relationship so that the parent can say, hey, I can't do this with my kid right now. I can't teach them algebra today. Um, I don't have the knowledge sometimes to teach them. I mean, I'm relearning algebra right along with my daughter right now. <laughs> so uh, it's having that relationship with the teacher, being willing to have those conversations. Uh, our Kava families, are, get used to that really quickly. If you don't reach out for help, you're struggling on your own and nobody likes that. And so we check in with them, they check in with us and having that relationship built in makes it more approachable as well as building in that structure in your home. When parents are setting this up for themselves, getting a schedule for your kids and making sure they have a dedicated learning space. Um, sometimes working at the kitchen table is your only option, but if you have you know, a space set aside at that table that you know is always gonna be your quiet place where you can work. Um, right. If you have a desk in your bedroom, we know schoolwork always happens at that place. So it's a place where learning can happen and it helps to switch your mind. It's almost like walking into that classroom for the first time. So it helps to switch their mindset from, okay, now we're playing and now we're at school and it's two different places. I'm the same way. I mean, if I don't sit at my desk, I write for a living, basically go out and shoot stories. And if I'm, you know, you just feel comfortable at your desk where you, you just think and you put this puzzle together. And if my computer's broken or something, I got to sit at someone else's desk. I'm like, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> so I, I, I get that part. Um, I imagine there's a cost. Is it affordable to do it's this? It's free. <laughs> okay. Are free online charter school. Yeah, it's, it is a completely public school. So um, California Virtual Academies itself is a tuition free public charter. They enroll with us. Uh, once they enroll, we provide the materials that they need. There are some that are home based materials, typical things you'd find in your home that we don't supply. But for the most part, we supply the books. If a student needs a computer, they can get a loaner computer from us as well as a printer. Oh. Uh, and so they have all the materials they need even up to a an internet reimbursement that's provided yearly if they need it. So you, uh, you've you seen kids go through this program from, I don't know, you've been there long enough to see Jordan, a kid yeah. through, but you've been there long enough to see these kids grow uh, and, it, and it's working, isn't it? It is. We have kids and we have last number I looked at between 850, 950 graduates this school year from all of our Kava charters. Uh, we were actually just talking earlier today about a student who enrolled with us in kindergarten, my first year here with Kava, and is graduating this year as a senior with honors. So um, we are so excited to see our kids graduate and where they are going. They're going to some amazing colleges and A to G ready. And we have some, some amazing kids at our school for sure. And graduation ceremonies uh, in our COVID-19 world are virtual. Are you virtual too, or do they actually have- We have do to have virtual. Normally we have an in-person graduation. We have different locations throughout the state and people come and do the whole graduation thing. Um, but this year we are doing virtual and we're actually really excited. Our kids are making slides and we have our keynote speakers that are still able to come and do keynotes, but online and all of our families are able to attend and even people from out of state that wouldn't normally be able to now they're able to attend because it's online so no, it's 
some unique opportunities and our kids are, are excited. So it'll be fun. Our teachers are super excited too. We have some fun things planned. <laughs> Great. Well, Angela, I can feel your energy. You obviously love what you do. <laughs> I um, do. If there's some, uh, some parents out there or students that are watching this that say, you know, I'd like to get involved. I want more information. How do they get in touch? We have a website. It's kava.k12.com. And we are constantly um, asking for students to come and enroll. And our enrollment is open for next year. Um, our kids are excited to have new families come in. We have some exciting things planned. Um, we're looking into esports leagues, and we have some new electives coming for high school. Um, lots of fun things coming for our K five and K and middle school programs. So, um, we're welcoming new students right now. I think you're going to be busy next year. I think so too. <laughs> it's going to be a great school year. We're excited. All right, Angela Covell. Uh, great to talk to you, and all the best with the. Uh, with the virtual academies right here in California, and, and they're free. So yep. <laughs> what would you like? Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. I'm Frank Malicote here in the Bay Area. If you'd like more information all the time, 24-7, go to coronavirusnow.com. Have a great day. <laughs>